Hey there, how is everyone doing? Hello there. Uh, glad, welcome to our living room. We've been all over the country. We've been to North Carolina, South Carolina, Florida, and then here we are back home, and I'm thankful to be back we home. We came through Georgia. Uh, yeah, we've, we've covered it all. Uh, yeah. And had such wonderful meetings. We had a fantastic meeting in North Carolina and in Florida, and just so wonderful to see our friends and our family there. And and uh, just amazing. It was just powerful, was it not? I, I was thrilled with the meetings. It, it was such an anointing. People are coming back to church and shaking off the fear that yeah. they've been plagued with for weeks. And it's like there's a, an explosion of faith and expectancy and hope. And uh, it was just very refreshing. It was nice. The meetings down in Florida were over the top. I loved it. And so. North Carolina. Some of my favorite people in North Carolina. Well, yes, of course. I mean, that's just a given. <laughs> uh, every year, Mike does a beach service, uh, which is wonderful. And uh, we have had up to, what, 1,000 people during well, Easter, yeah, Father's at Day. At least 1,000, uh, if not 2,000. Yeah, Amazing. as far that's as the eye can see. Probably a half a mile from the place where we preach on the beach to the pier, oh, just yeah. saturated with people. It's people who are visiting the beach, and they come and, and do Sunday morning service, which I think is wonderful because I think it's very important to be in the house of God or to be in a church service. The beach would be a wonderful house of God for me. I love that. And so well, I we'll think that's important. We that <laughs> I think that's important well, uh, to be. Hey, Maureen. Hey, Sheila, Jerry. Nice to see you all. Everything is going great, Maureen. We're glad to be. We'll see you Sunday morning. I'm excited to see you and talk to you and catch up. Sheila, love you, babe. Uh, tonight, we've got a wonderful subject, and I think it's uh, a subject that needs to be dealt with. Uh, because everywhere we go, you you feel this emotion, do you not? Uh, oh, the fear. The fear. Uh, just sitting at a restaurant or walking through Target or walk anywhere you're at, uh, you see that spirit of fear that's uh, on people, uh, of uncertainty of what the future holds and uncertainty of what's going to happen. And, and I guess I hear it all the time. What do you think is going to happen? Well, I think that Jesus is going to reign. I think that he's got it all under control. I think control. he's sovereign. He's and, in control. And everything's going to be he's, all right. He's on the throne. Yeah. And in so, fact, one of my favorite scriptures about him being on the throne is uh, in Psalms uh, 29, Psalms 29, where it says uh, that uh, that during the flood, he was on the throne, uh, that the Lord sits enthroned at the flood. And that was the most chaotic, cataclysmic time on this mm -hmm. planet. Can you imagine the intensity of terror on the earth? And yet, in the midst of it all, God sat enthroned mm -hmm. at the flood. And his chosen, his covenant people, Noah and his family, were secure yeah. in the midst of chaos. And so that's a pattern, because Jesus did say, as it was in the days of Noah so shall it be in the days of the coming of the Son of Man. I believe we can be secure that our God is still on the throne. The throne. I believe Amen. that. And and you have to take control of that spirit. I was just telling Destiny this, uh, I guess, yesterday. Uh, when fear comes in like a flood, that's when you grab onto the Word and you start lifting up the Scriptures in your spirit and praying and and uh, and commanding that fear to leave you and get away. Uh, I think that's important. I mean, I know the times that I have had the greatest fear, usually God would give me one scripture and I would claim it over and over and over and that spirit would leave me. And uh, I wish more people would do that. And when you say spirit, I don't think you really mean an evil spirit or a demon. Oh, no, 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 uh, no, uh, no Because no. I think people misinterpret that passage where it says God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a power and of love and of a sound Same mind. mind. Uh, you could substitute the word attitude or mindset. Yeah. God mindset. has not given us the mindset of fear because uh, it, it's not always a demon. Sometimes it's just part of the fallen nature. It's a human emotion that all of us face, and we all have to learn how to conquer it. Yeah. It was the first 
evidence of the fallen state. Yeah. When uh, God came into the garden after Adam and Eve had transgressed, uh, the Bible said he called out and said, Adam, where are you? Where are you? And he said, I uh, heard your voice in the garden and I was afraid. And he said, who, who told you you were naked? Uh, so the first thing that uh, struck Adam's heart was this fear now of the unexpected, this fear of being insecure because his relationship with God had been broken and fear came in. Well, if our relationship with God has been restored, fear should go out because if it came in when the relationship was broken, it should depart when the re relationship is healed. Yeah, I like that because I've often looked at the, that whole story of Adam and Eve uh, because they, they thought life was going to go a certain way. Eve thought that if she took of the apple, that she would be like God. It wasn't an apple. Okay, not an apple. Uh, <laughs> I, I've said Eve, the same Eve thing. Eve thought the fruit, that when the she ate fruit. of the peach, if it was the, the apple, the banana, <laughs> then we should never say an apple a day keeps the doctor okay, so, away. Okay. We would say an apple a day makes the doctor stay. <laughs> okay, so she took of the forbidden fruit, and in her mind, she thought it's going to be this way. I'll be like God. And... It's not at all how it happened. The opposite happened. The opposite happened. And hasn't that happened to you? You thought life was going to go a certain way, and then it didn't happen that way, and a fear just rushes in because uh, there's something about when things don't go your way, it causes fear and insecurity. It does. And, and it shakes you, shakes you to the core where you try to figure it out. And, and I believe that's why they hid, because they had no idea what the next step was. And, and they, they couldn't depend or trust in God anymore. No, because it had been severed. Yeah, that relationship was ruined. And, uh, and so the opposite should be the case. If you have a relationship with God, well, I, I love this scripture. I want to bring out 1 John chapter 4, verse 18. Okay. This says, there is no fear in love. I love that. But perfect love casts out fear because fear involves torment. If you've got a lot of torment going on in your mind mm -hmm. that may be rooted in fear yeah. and your fear may be rooted in a failure to recognize the redemption, the reconciliation, the love relationship you have with the Lord now. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear because fear involves torment but he who fears has not been made perfect in love. I like that part that says perfect love, or in other words, a perfect realization of the love yeah. God has for you and the love you have for God and how that love bond between you and the Creator is unconquerable, unbeatable. Go to Romans chapter 8, and it says, uh, we are more than conquerors through him who loved That's us. I'm persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love, love of that. God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Listen, everything else can go awry in your life, but if that love bond that is established, John said right before this scripture, he said, we have known and believed the love that God has toward us. God is love. And he who dwells in love dwells in God and God in him. So we've known it. It's an intellectual thing. It's a mental concept. We understand God so loved the world. Why don't you put your name in there instead of the words, the world. For God so loved the world. That yeah. just generalizes it where you're part of this huge mass of billions of people and Maybe you don't feel the personal importance that you have in the sight of heaven, but instead put God so loved Elizabeth Shreve yeah. that he gave his only begotten son. God so loved Destiny Shreve that he gave his only begotten son. Or Maureen Cummins or Sheila, whoever might Sheila be listening. Hancock. Or God so loved Sheila Hancock Anna, that he gave listening. his only begotten son. Wow, then you realize he loves me. And if he loves me, then that should exile fear from my heart and life because 
you're going to watch over what belongs to you. You're going to preserve what is important to you. And you're important to God. Mm. But how do you how do, <laughs> okay, how do you really push that fear away? Because some people are so tormented by it. I know I have been. Uh, years ago, I was so tormented by fear that I could not sleep, remember? I remember. The nightmares was so overwhelming to me. And it was because something had happened in my life that had really shaken me to the core. And, and I don't exactly remember when I was set free from it. But I know that we had a real battle to get away from that torment. And we prayed. And we over prayed. And, over. and we prayed. And it didn't go away. So what do you think it, is the best way to get that fear away? It didn't go away. away immediately. But over a period of time, over months, I, I'd say several months. It was months. Maybe it six didn't happen months like that. Or a year. There was a gradual healing that took place. And that healing took place, I believe, because you just kept going to the Word. You kept right, going yeah, to did. the Word. And and the more you got embedded in the Word, the more it changed your character. I love to read your posts on Facebook because I see the person you've become. You came out of that web of fear, and now it just exudes confidence and, and bravery and courage. See, I love that quote that courage is not the absence of fear. Courage is the conquering of fear. Yeah, I love that. And so if you're afraid, that's not weird. No. There is not something wrong with you. That's an ailment of the Adamic race. From Adam onward, fear is something we all face. Yeah. In fact, uh, the worst fear, I think, for all of us would be what Hebrews chapter 2, verses 14 and 15 talk about. Inasmuch then as the children have partaken of flesh and blood, he himself, speaking of Jesus, likewise shared in the same that through death he might destroy him who had the power of death, that is the devil, and release those who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. Now that word is bondage. Fear brings bondage. And some people represented by this verse all their lifetime were mm -hmm. in bondage because of the fear of death. But Jesus destroyed him who had the power of death. He wiped him out. He leveled him. He battered him. Yeah. He rendered him ineffective. He stripped him of his power. He stripped him uh, or spoiled him of his authority in this realm. And now Jesus is Lord. And if, if he's Lord, of our lives, we have nothing to worry about. I love, I love uh, Psalm 27, verse 1. The Lord is my light and salvation. Whom, whom shall, shall I fear? fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom, whom shall, shall I be afraid? afraid? I love that. Uh, so there you have it. The Lord is my light. In other words, I understand life. I'm not in the darkness of deception anymore. The Lord is my light. He's enlightened my mind with the truth. And he's my salvation, and the word salvation means deliverance. And usually in the Hebrew, when uh, you go to the root of the English word, it's the word Yeshua, which was actually Jesus' name. So it's quite possible, I'd have to check it out, that David said, the Lord is Yeshua. The Lord is Jesus. The Lord is my salvation, which means deliverance. Deliverance from anything. Deliverance from your sin, your guilt, your failures yesterday's pain, tomorrow's unknown. Uh, he's your deliverance from every satanic strategy, your deliverance from death itself. You are one privileged individual. You are one blessed individual. So the Lord is my strength and my salvation. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? So he is my strength. I'm not dependent on my own strength. So when I'm tapped into his strength, I'm not afraid of anything. If that verse is really emerging the way it should in my life. And and Mike's pretty fearless. Uh, he is. He, Some, uh, sometimes that may get me into trouble. Yeah, it does get him in trouble sometimes. But uh, I want to go back to how you overcome fear. Okay. Uh, if you remember um, when we went for after my biopsy, uh, 
I was, I had fear. And Mike and I was sitting in a, a doctor's office. The surgeon was coming in to talk about, uh, talk about what they were going to do to me. And the surgeon sat down right across from us. And I, I guess I had the look of fear. Do you think? I mean, I, I, I was, I was gone. I was just a zombie yeah. in that room. Yeah. Uh, and he was talking and then he just abruptly said, stop. This meeting's over. I, I'll have to go. I'll be right back. And and we were like, is he not going to do the surgery? What's going to happen? I had no idea what was going on. And he comes back in and he sits down and he said, we can't proceed any further with this until we conquer fear. fear. Yeah. And, and I just looked at amazing. him and he handed me a piece of paper. And on that paper was like, I don't know, 50 scriptures all dealing with fear you know uh, i think over 300 times the lord says don't be afraid right fear they not. say uh, uh, i know i've never gone through and numbered each one but they say, they say over in the king in the king james 365 times it says fear yeah. not and that doctor said now we're going to sit here and we're going to read these out loud and i promise you with each scripture that we read i felt that begin to lift and and that that fear, that thing that had been tormenting my mind was lifted. Not saying I didn't fight fear again, because I think that you're constantly in a warfare. Yeah. Uh, I mean, constantly, constantly in a warfare over this thing called fear. Uh, but during that course right there, during that time, by the time we got to the end of that page, I was ready to face the next step. Mm -hmm. and, and it was because of the Word of God, which is powerful. And, and it's a two-edged sword. It's a two-edged sword, and it can cut fear right down. I mean, right down to the core. Well, the Bible said that the Word of God is a two-edged sword, dividing asunder soul and spirit, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. And so, uh, what does that mean? It divides soul and spirit. I have well, no the, idea. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad he didn't ask me because I was thinking, oh, please don't throw it to me. <laughs> Oh, wow. Yes, uh, discuss the, the, the correct exegesis of that scripture. The, the what? The correct exegesis of that scripture. <laughs> explain it, hallelujah. <laughs> hallelujah. Okay, okay. Uh, we'll explain it. Uh, well, uh, <laughs> the soul part of you is the part that has human emotions at war. The soul is still in a struggle. It hasn't been completely redeemed. Your spirit has been completely redeemed. Your spirit has been purified, separated, saturated with the presence of God, reborn, spiritually renewed, which means to be made new all over again. That may mean God put a brand new spirit in you or took your spirit and made it new all over again. You were born from above, the Bible says, in the original uh, Greek, to be born again is to be born from above. And so the regenerated part of you is full of faith. It's saturated with the nature of God, the attributes of God, and, and the confidence, the courage, the, mm -hmm. the wonder-working faith that resided within the firstborn son. And the word of God comes and slices the connection between that purified, redeemed part of you and the part that's still caught in the struggle the human emotions, and it gives you the ability to discern the difference between the two. It, it, it divides asunder soul and spirit, and you realize that's soulish. All these nightmares, that's soulish. That's not from God. That's not from uh, my Father. That's not from my regenerated spirit. My soul is in a struggle right now, and the determining factor in winning the battle of the spirit over the soul is the word of God. The word of God. Is the word of God. You've got to quote the word. Uh, depend it, on the word. It frightens me that a lot of people aren't studying the word the way they used to. I, I had a Sunday school class a couple of years ago, and I, I asked them, I don't know, something about the book of John. Do you remember this? You don't remember it. And they had no idea what the book of John was. All right. 
Uh, and that Unbelievable. Just shook me. So I went and bought Bibles for everyone in my Sunday school class, and we started doing Bible readings because it's so important. My mother used to say, you've just got to get it in your spirit. You've got to know it. And honestly, when you need it, if you've studied the Word enough, when you need it, it comes, I mean, it just comes out. It's in you. It's part of you. It's your necessary food. Uh, years ago, mother, mother was sick. And uh, remember the doctors told us she was going to die. And immediately a scripture, I think out of Ezekiel, just came into my spirit and just came right out of my mouth. Remember that? No, no. Go ahead. Uh, you remember we found her in the bathroom. Right, right. She was bleeding to death. That. Oh, and yeah, yeah. That scripture, okay. yeah. I found you polluted. When I found you polluted in your own blood, and I, I said, said unto thee, you, live. live. And, and you know, and that's not a scripture you write on your refrigerator. That's not something that no, that I don't you think just you, would. You, you keep you know constantly in your mind. Not like the Lord is my shepherd. And in but, that same passage, it says, "When I passed by you, your time was the time of love." I love that. And, yeah. You know, and so uh, you feed your spirit with the Word of God, and and when you need it. It will come out if your spirit is, is full of it. Now, I, did you speak that over your mother? Yeah, I did. Yeah, uh, and, we were and, standing in that hallway. And then, what? Uh, and, and then she she had a miraculous recovery. Oh yeah, boom yeah. like that. It was amazing. Hey Melody, how's my babies doing? I need some pictures. You need to send me some pictures. I need to put them up. Melanie just had another little boy. Okay, we're in the middle of a teaching right oh, now. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I, I'm sorry. I'm it's saying hello. It's supposed to be a very proper... Hey, Hannah, and... I love you. I love you so much. <laughs> we uh, do love you, Melody. Uh, Hannah's on here, too. Uh, but, you know... Which Hannah? Hannah Morgan. Oh, wow. I know. Hello, Hannah. And Anna Hayes is on here, too. Anna Hayes. Hey, Anna, you still on? If you are, click me. We Let sure me see. love Anna. Oh, by the way, Anna, I don't do Snapchat. Uh, I have it, but I don't do it. So you need to send me Facebook messages if you can. But you know, I don't even know what Snapchat is. Hardly. Please I, don't do it. You do good with <laughs> Facebook. <laughs> you, you do good with Facebook. But, uh, uh, so we're talking about fear tonight. How what it is, and and you know what? I don't think it belittles you when you face fear. You know, I I think that it's an over. Moses was afraid. Joshua was afraid. I, I I don't think Jesus was. Do you think there was ever a time in Jesus' life when he Well, was, he was tempted in all points like as we are, so he had, he must have had, some he had to it come against his mind, I'm sure, but he overcame it. Maybe when he said, let this cup pass from me? Yeah, he was, could that uh, have been uh, he was a fearful? Pos possibly afraid that he could not handle the pressure. Uh, or, or he felt fear. He felt fear maybe. and he overcame it. Uh, but uh, I don't think it belittles it. Don't feel like you're any less of a spiritual person just because you fight fear. Um, that's how I often felt because Mike is so fearless. I always felt beneath him because I would wrestle with these uh, fearful things. Is this going to happen? Is that going to happen? Is my kids going to be all right? And and I would feel just a little bit beneath. Not That's probably not the word, but I, I wouldn't feel it as spiritual, and I would be... I guess I would condemn my own self because I've wrestled with fear. But I wrestle with fears. You don't I, wrestle I, with fears. <laughs> you don't no, wrestle with the fears. Well, no, I get them in a half Nelson and hold them on the <laughs> canvas, you know. But they're still there. They, they are still there. You're uh, fearless. But there's some things that have cured me of fear. And one of them is fearing God. Uh, that that's the curious statement you find in Exodus chapter 20 where uh, where the people of Israel ran from Mount Sinai and they said Moses you talk to us and we'll listen to you but let not God talk to us or we'll die and Moses said the most curious thing he said fear not for God has come to prove you that his fear may be before your faces that you sin not well that sounded like double talk with the first breath, he says, fear not. With the second breath, he says, God did this, so you will fear. The mountain catching on fire, the thunderclap of the Ten Commandments. It's two kinds of fear. That, that word, F-E-A-R, means terror that makes you shrink and recoil from any kind of pressure or, or any kind of uh, uh, situation where you feel out of control. 
or fear can mean to hollow God with the mo most uh, overwhelming sense of reverence. You just, you melt before him in adoration. That's the fear of the Lord. And it's so far removed from fleshly fear, they're completely different things. And so in essence, Moses is saying that you should fear not because God did this so you'll fear where you'll shift from one meaning of the word to the other meaning of the word instead of being caught up in, in the fear of the unknown, the fear of whether or not you'll be able to fulfill the commandments that you just heard, the fear of God's reprisal if you don't. Instead of being caught up in that fear, get caught up in adoration of him. Melt before him in total oh, worship. And if you fear the Lord, if you just melt before him with a worshipful heart, it drives the other kind of fear out because yeah. you know that he will strengthen you to be what you need to be and do what you need to do and recover when you need to recover. That's the way that. he is. I love that. I love, you know, I think that it's a, a healthy thing to fear God like that. And I don't think it's a, a, a f being afraid of him. You know, I grew up being afraid oh. of God. Uh, afraid. I've had to repent of some of my preaching, you know, where I think I engendered fear in people you know, that way. Instead of giving them confidence, they have a loving God heavenly loves you Father, and that and that He wants the best for you, and He wants to see you prosper and be in good health. And and fearing Him with that kind of reverence can conquer anything else that's going on in your life. And uh, that's how I've survived. That's how I've survived. Yeah, me too. Uh, you know, we have not even gotten to the scripture that I wanted to cover. Oh. And that's Isaiah 43, verse 1. But now thus says the Lord who created you, O Jacob, and he who formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name. You are mine. I love that. Wow, what That's personal like a love letter. Yeah, what it's, personal care God is extending wow. and expressing it. But he says, Fear not, and his first reason for them to be fearless was I have, not I will, not I am, but I have redeemed past you. Past tense. And yeah, that's past tense. And or my English teacher friend would say that's uh what did he say that was? Present perfect tense. I, have, I know that's I, weird. Look, I was so I know happy that I got past tense. Just yeah, let me have that. It looks laugh. like past tense, but it's really present perfect tense. And I asked him what he meant. He, he told me I was wrong in the way I preached it. And he said that's something that happened in the past that continues to the present and will probably continue on into, into the future. And God was referring to the fact that he had loosed them from the bondage of Egypt. The word redeem means to loose away from bondage, yeah. to set free, to purchase with a purchase price. And the purchase price was the blood of a lamb slain for every Israeli household, and the blood was put over the doorpost. That was the price that was paid that kept them from the destroying angel that night. Uh, people call it the angel of death, but that's not what the scripture says. It, the Bible says a des the destroying angel that went into the land of Egypt. And God was saying, fear not. And that was the blood of an animal that should have made them wow. fearless. We have the blood of the Son of God over our lives. And, and it's not just dried blood up on a doorpost. It's living blood that flows through us constantly. And every moment the blood touches us, we're sanctified all over again, yeah. renewed all over again, justified all over again, restored all over again. No wonder no weapon formed against you shall prosper. But uh, see... We can say it in the present perfect tense too, or past tense, whichever way you want to look at it, because matter. we can look back to the cross mm -hmm. and say the price has already been paid. It's a done deal. If I fail, there's forgiveness in the blood. If I need strength, there's empowerment in the blood. Whatever I need, he already has blessed me with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places, and I've been redeemed. I've been purchased right. by the blood from the curse of the law, and I'm free now. And whatever you buy, if you spend a lot to buy something, you're going to take care of it. 
you're going to watch over it to make sure yeah. it's preserved. And um, I went and got my oil changed in my car yesterday. Why? Because that's an expensive item and I want to take care of it. Well, God wants to give you an oil change because you are the most precious thing in creation yeah. to him. And that's why he would say to you, fear not, for I have redeemed you and I've called you by your name. He knows you by name. I love that. Praise God. And he says, you're mine. I like you that. hear that possessiveness in his voice? You are mine. You belong to me. Devil, don't mess with this one. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Oh, that's a powerful scripture. I love you it. Isaiah mine. 43, 1. Yeah, I'm going to write that down. Isaiah 43, 1. Isaiah 43, 1. And he starts out by saying, but now thus says the Lord who created you, O Jacob. In other words, you would not even have an existence if God had not brought you into existence. So the one who got you here can get you there. So why be afraid? You couldn't have gotten yourself to this point anyhow. Oh, no. So you sure can't get yourself to that point. Uh, and, and so you've got to trust in him. You've just got to put your dependency on him. And believe that he's going to see you through. Mm -hmm. In whatever situation you're in, wherever you're at, with your health, with your finances, with your calling. You know, all those things, fear, can, can stop you from moving forward. But if you have confidence, you got something to say? I'm, no, no, I thought ahead. you were finished. No, if you have confidence, go ahead. If you have confidence in the word, like Mike said... He's already redeemed you, and he's called you by his name. And he, you're his. And if you're his, then you can have full confidence and, and cast fear away. I just thought of a little poem I used to quote. I love your poetry. <laughs> well, this isn't mine. It belonged to somebody else. But it goes like this. I know not when or where I pass from this familiar scene, but he is here, and he is there, and he's all the way between. And when I pass from this veil of death to that dim and vast unknown, though late I stay or soon I go, I shall not pass alone. I and love so that. if you know, he'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. He's with you always. You can be fearless. Yeah, that was that. the first thing the angel said when the babe was born in Bethlehem. God assumed a very vulnerable form a little defenseless baby in a manger and yet in his defenselessness and even though he was soon to become the object of someone's murderous plot to kill him the angel up in the heavens said fear not fear not fear not to the shepherds in the field fear not. for i bring you good tidings of great joy which shall be to all people wow if the New Covenant was launched with that statement, do not fear, then it's going to be the overriding commandment from God all the way through to the end. I love it. I love it. Fear you know, not. we've been going 32 minutes. Oh, we got to go. Fear not. Fear not. We're ending. <laughs> fear not. We'll come to a close. <laughs> we love y'all all. Uh, I hope you look up Isaiah 43, 1. Uh, I hope you uh, pray tonight and get a scripture in your heart. Uh, something you can hold on to. Should we pray for everybody? I would love to pray with everyone because I, I, I just feel like people are fighting fear. And, and I believe in your prayers, babe. So let's pray. Okay. And let's pray for healing too and whatever your deliverance need may be. Yeah. Father God, I Thank just you, reach Jesus. out my faith toward all of our friends Thank online, you, all who are listening to Lord, destiny right here in this you, room, Jesus. to anyone under the influence of the Lord, words we that we've spoken. People, we claim we the exile away. of fear. Cast yes, fear Jesus. out of every heart. Yes. We command fear, fear to leave fear every not. mind, Thank every you, stronghold of fear collapsing. The weapons we of our redeemed. warfare are mighty through own. God. And Thank I claim you, deliverance from fear. Let Thank the opposite you, happen. 
that every heart that is within the sound of our Thank voice you, receive the gift of faith yes. right now. I claim an awakening of faith. You said it's a supernatural gift in 1 Corinthians 12. Yes, and I claim the awakening of faith. You are the author faith and the arise. finisher of our faith. Yes. In Jesus' name, I thank you for more faith in my life, Lord. And I thank you for more faith in the lives of all those Praise who are watching. And Praise everyone... God who needs a physical healing, if Bunny's healing watching, home. I claim healing for the her healing right home. now. In that eye where she's been struggling, I claim Thank healing you, for every person that's in need of healing right now. Do not be afraid of sickness and disease. With his stripes, you were healed. And if you were healed, you are amen, healed. Be amen, healed amen, right amen, now amen. in Jesus' name. Thank you. And you Lord. ought to shout out, I claim it right now. I, claim I it refuse right now. to fear sickness. I mm, claim my you, healing Jesus. in Jesus' name. Paul, it's Love been you guys. wonderful to be with y'all tonight right here in our living room, unscripted with Mike and Elizabeth. Remember, it's Sunday night at 7 o'clock. There is Going Deeper with Mike. I'm not for sure what he'll be talking about. And our two podcasts. I'm continuing on the laws of the kingdom of God. Last, last two weeks, I've laws of covered the, kingdom. the law of righteousness, the law of faith, the law of God after the inward man, mm -hmm. all the laws that rule the kingdom of God. And that's Sunday night at 7. Also, Tuesday and Fridays are his podcasts. So, y'all, make sure you're listening to that. Subscribe. Go to uh, our website, see what we've got going on. Uh, I am doing a ladies meeting up in Richmond, Kentucky, and then one in Morganton, North Carolina. That's on our itinerary. So love you all. God bless y'all. Have a love wonderful, wonderful night. Bye-bye.